What's up dudes, it's Chad here at Tenton Trout Water. It's mid-January. I'm here with my trusty Shakespeare Sigma. I don't know why I seem to be really enjoying using this recently. I, I've got it out the old, um, got it out the shed and give it an airing, but it's quite a capable little rod. My recommended beginner rod. Anyway, we're here at Tenton Trout Water. It is winter fishing. I'm the only one at the fishery today. Let's see how it goes. Now this is an interesting scenario here, ladies and gentlemen. Because often what I would do is I'd turn up to a small still water and I would use the wind direction to choose where I'm going to fish on that particular day. The general rule that I follow is wherever the wind is pushing all the food I will go to that corner. So it's the absolute pig to cast against the wind but you can pretty much always assume the trout are going to be in the corner where the wind's blowing into. Or, or sort of, certainly a high proportion of trout anyway. Um, but today is absolutely flat calm. And the tent and barrels ringing. So that's scuppered me a little bit there, people. I'm not sure where to start. I've got my, fr I've got three favourite places I like to fish here. The shallow end can be really good on its day, or absolutely useless on another particular day it all depends on where the fish are but i've had some good days there and I've had some bad days there and i also like this deep dam end in that corner is my favorite spot that's where you're going to find me nine times out of ten at tenterden but i've had a couple of really good sessions on this opposite bank um as you saw when i uh hooked that fish on that black snake a couple of videos ago that was amazing Ugh. A little bit perilous on the dam, guys. Yuck. I've got a, on the point, I've got one of those blobs you pick up from eBay, you know, that never fails. Avoid the blank blob and this, that, and other. Uh, that's my text message going to Predator Sound <laughs> on the middle dropper. I've got an Apps Blood Worm, red. And on the point fly, I've got a pink apps, but it's wrapped in lead on the Martin Williams. That's going to get it deeper. I'm going to try and twitch and draw it and uh, see if I can have any luck with the apps because this really is the sort of time of year and things like love worms really should be working. <laughs> but that is the hilarious blob I've ever seen in my life. It's like half pink, half orange. Got some a little bit of squirmy wormy hanging off it. Literally. Well, it's disgusting, <laughs> but uh, let's see if it really does save the blank. But obviously at the moment it's floating there because it doesn't have any water in its fibres. So let's see if it pulls underneath. It should do because that Martin Williams apse has got an uh, awful lot of lead back around it. It's actually a stalking apse. Give it a little tug. There we go. So the good thing about fishing apse is even when they're dropping through the water, they are fishing. Their legs are doing that. You can literally twitch and draw. I think I've actually um, put too many layers on today, guys. I'm really hot. <laughs> but um, this time of year, you just, I'd rather be hot and take a couple of layers off and stick them on the bench. Rather than be freezing cold, because when you're cold, Basically, your day's ruined because you never quite get warm again. It doesn't matter how many cups of coffee or if you go and sit in the car with heating on. Yeah, I can, I can see those in the water. I think it should be okay. Oh, I've seen a few rises out in this bit of water. Let's. Thing is, that could be a carp for all I know, but let's just go on the edge of that there. Right, the wife messaged me about five, ten minutes ago. I better check what she's saying. We all know what it's like. Don't, know war. Don't ignore the wife when fishing, folks. Do it at your peril. <laughs> right, dude, it's been a little bit slow so far this morning. I think it's due to the conditions. Glassy calm always um, slows the sport up as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I was going to ask you the question. What do you do to pass the time when you're fishing and when you kind of lose yourself? Do you just go for the peace and quiet? Um, Myself, I can often be seen with one earpiece in, 
listen to audible audio books is the way that i pass the time when it's a little bit slow um all different sorts of stuff i listen to um literally from old steptoe and sun episodes to the witcher or to um <laughs> wow true crime all, all sorts of stuff you know there's such a great little uh app audible for the for the roving angler you know it helps pass those hours when um action isn't thick and fast uh, what do you do to pass the time guys let me know seeing quite a bit of movement over there guys so i'm gonna make my way across and uh see what we can see i haven't had any pulls or um suggestions that i'm at the right depth or the right area for fish at the moment so as always my best advice is keep moving you know they do tend to pod up in the winter months and uh if you're on the fish you're on the fish and if you're not you're not and that's when you can find the people who stay rooted to one spot may sometimes struggle um if you're able to move i would suggest to do so as much as you can but uh you know sometimes if people are disabled or have limited mobility obviously they can't move as much as um others can but if you're able to do it i would suggest moving every sort of 20 30 minutes if you don't have any luck because yeah that's what you need to do it's one of the few variables that you have within your power to change you can't change the air pressure the wind direction the temperature but what you can change is your flies your line type and your location and uh, if something's not working and you want to catch fish I would definitely say moving is the first thing I would try sometimes even before a fly change you know I think location and depth are one of the biggest things for catching fish in my um, novice experience or my novice or intermediate I, I don't know I don't certainly don't consider myself an expert um, there's plenty of expert fly fishers out there and I speak to them and they know a lot more about fly life and tactics than I do but uh, that's what's so great about the sport you're always learning something if you, if you uh, switch off and say that my way is the only way and you stop learning and I think you need to give it up there's always stuff you can learn from other people guys that's why I always see what other people are up to and pinch a bit of their tactics and add it to my own arsenal kind of a hybrid <laughs> oh this is so sludgy right let's give it a go hello Mr Fox don't know if you can get that there on video guys he's a uh all the way across the field there at the top okay unexpected guys unexpected right <laughs> wow i've um gone to two flies a leech on the point and a black rubber leg daddy um i need to currently <laughs> stop my audible book there we go wow that's what i think that might be on a black rubber leg daddy guys yeah, I think that's on a black rubber leg daddy on the dropper. I've completely switched off them, gang. I've got to be honest. Completely switched off. And out of nowhere, I just got this wonderful take. Oh, nice rainbow. The black rubber leg daddy, guys, as I've always said. It's such a consistent fly at Tenterton Trout Water. I've got to go back and get my net. <laughs> I'd actually kind of resign myself to the blank today. So let's go and net this fish. Yeah, black rubber leg daddy, guys. Where are we? Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to bring him in and unhook him here. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at the colours on that bad boy. There we go. Just let him... There we go. Off he goes. Straight out of the net. I absolutely was not expecting that, dudes. I thought I was in for a blank. So, they're listening to my audio book about a female prison officer and her experiences. And uh, my line went tight. Get in, my son.
Dang it, guys. On the hang. Come up and grab the leech. Now I'm tangled. Woohoo! Okay, guys. Um, I was bringing the fly in then and I saw my line twitch. I stopped and started a couple of times. And uh, yeah, we got this rainbow trout here. I've I dropped a few on the hang in the last hour, but awesome. Right, I'm walking this fish down to where the net is. <laughs> it's a nice looking rainbow, guys. Again, black rub leg daddy, guys. So, well, almost fell in then. That would have been awesome. Right, that's a bit perilous. Okay. I'm still on barbless hooks here, guys. So, I need to be making sure I keep the line tight. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a really, really pretty rainbow. Cool. That's quite a nice fish, about three and a half pound, I'd say. Okay. There you go, dudes. That's a very pretty rainbow. There we go. And he's gone. Whew. Right, so I've got a black rubber leg daddy on the dropper. And we've got a Green Montana with a tail on the uh, point fly, guys. So I'm just going to uh, have a little stop off at lakes one and two, maybe five to ten minutes on each on my way out. Quite often I've picked up the extra fish on the way home uh, doing that in the past. So I often get people ask me if I've caught fish on lakes one and two. And uh, yeah, although I fish the main lake most of the time, I have most certainly caught fish in lakes two and one. Um, especially lake one doesn't get fish very much. Um, it's always worth giving them 10 minutes in your session here because you can pick up that extra elusive fish. It's up on the first lake. There we go, guys. People have often asked me if I can catch in the top lake. I've just been sat here. Fan casting out my Montana. Oh, nice. Nice. That's a nice fish. Uh, people always ask me if I catch in this lake number one. And it's always worth coming up here and having 10 minutes. There we go. Lovely rainbow. Always worth 10 minutes on your way out, guys. Right. Cool. Yeah, it's going a bit. <laughs> God. They do fight. Look at that for a jump. Do fight well here at Tenderden, guys. They have a very good stock. So I've got daddy long legs on a dropper and he's taking the Montana. My two favourite tentadent flies. Just sat there on that seat. There we go. I'm going to have to lift him out of the water just to get the fly out. I don't normally do that, but... Where is it? Still got it? Okay. There we go. That's what I'm running by for release. There you go, mate. Thank you for that. Really pleasant just sat there on the seat, fan casting out, and one more fish for the road. 
wonderful session 